Okay, so let's finish up the notes here in chapter one of Bio 100. So what we first did was we looked at the scientific method. Now let's look at uh, the rest of the stuff here in this chapter. So first off, uh, this is a biology class and biology just means, uh, literally means the study of life. Bio means life, ology means study of. I wanna go back and uh, talk about uh, four basic theories in biology. So the first basic theory is the cellular theory. And cell theory states that all organisms are made of cells. Uh, the next theory here is the gene theory. And the gene theory states that organisms contain coded information that determines their form, their function, and their behavior. So our genes are gonna tell us what we look like, uh, how, we're, um, how we're gonna work, and how we're gonna behave. Now, of course, the environment also influences all those, and it depends on which trait we're talking about on which has more of an impact, uh, has an impact. Next is hereditary theory. And hereditary theory states that the genes of an organism are inherited as discrete units. Now, we're gonna get into this a little later on in the semester, but we essentially, we have 46 chromosomes, 23 of those we get from our mom, 23 of those that we get from our dad. Those chromosomes carry our genes, all right? So when you give off in a gamete, uh, a chromosome, you're either giving off your mom's chromosome that you got or your dad's chromosome that you got of those 23. So you only give off 23 uh, chromosomes in a gamete. So and it could be either your mom's or dad's that you've given off. So what you do there is you give off a whole gene, right? So either it's your mom's gene for that trait or your dad's gene for that trait, not a mixture of a particular gene. And lastly uh, is evolutionary theory. And evolutionary theory states that species change over time and that living species have arisen from earlier life forms. And we're gonna spend a lot of time on evolution later on this semester. Let's get to our last topic here in chapter one, and that's looking at the properties of life. So there are seven properties of life. Some of these I'm gonna get into a little bit more depth than others. So the first is that life is organized. All life exhibits complex organization just like what we see with the sunflower, just like what we see when we look at uh, other individuals, and same thing that we see with single-celled organisms. Next is that life is self-regulating. Organisms are going to undergo processes that are gonna allow themselves to stay alive. Now with this comes this idea known as homeostasis. Homeo means same and stasis means staying, uh, standing still. So homeostasis essentially is not moving. Right? So what this means though, is this is the maintenance of internal conditions within certain boundaries. So things like that are like our body temperature. Our body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna do things to keep us close to that temperature, right? So if we get too hot, uh, we start to sweat. If we get too cold, we start to shiver. Those are homeostatic mechanisms. If you need more water in your body, well, your thirst response kicks on. If you need more energy in your body, well, you get hungry. These are homeostatic mechanisms. This is showing a jackrabbit. Jackrabbits are pretty large bunnies, but one of the things that you can see is they've evolved for this uh, drier environments, hotter, drier environments that they're found in. And so they have these really large ears and you can see all those blood vessels in their ears. So when they get hot, what they do is they push blood out to those ears to help lose heat to the environment. Just like what we do, if we get hot, you'll see our skin get flush. We're pushing blood to our skin surface to lose heat that way. Okay, so next uh, is that all life utilizes energy. So organisms need to take in energy to perform life's activities. So, and this is uh, showing a uh, hummingbird here. Hummingbirds have very high metabolisms. Now, what metabolism is, is metabolism is all the chemical reactions that occur within a cell. Now, how does that relate to energy use? Well, all those chemical reactions that occur within our cells all require energy. So we talk about uh, you know, a hummingbird having a high metabolism here, it's because uh, its chemical reactions are occurring at a much higher rate than ours are, all right? So these guys literally need to eat their body weight in nectar per day to maintain their metabolism, all right? So, Next is that all organisms respond to environmental stimulus. Now, some of this can be seen very easily, like, you know, if somebody pokes you, you jerk away from them, maybe you hit that person back, 
Um, but you know, uh, not often do plants do what this Venus flytrap does, where this Venus flytrap, you know, responds very quickly by eating this damselfly. Most, but what you can do with plants, if, if plants are away from light, what you'll see is they'll grow towards the light, uh, and that's a response to an environmental stimulus there. Next is that all life reproduces. So uh, life reproduces one of two ways, either through asexual reproduction or sexual reproduction. So asexual reproduction is a creation of offspring by a single uh, parent without the participation of gametes. And gametes are egg and sperm cells. So I don't have any other pictures here, but if you're a single-celled organism, you would divide into two single-celled organisms. So here, the offspring are exactly like the parent. So you're just essentially making a copy, all right? So this is beneficial uh, in a constant environment. So if the environment is good for you and all your offspring have the same genetics as you do, well, it's gonna be good for all of your offspring as well. Next is sexual reproduction. That's what we see what uh, the giraffes would have and we reproduce this way as well. This is a creation of offspring by the fusion of gametes, so the fusion of egg and sperm cells. So here the offspring are similar to each other, but not exactly the same. And also here is that the offspring are similar to the parents, but not exactly like either parents, okay? So where this is beneficial is this is beneficial in a changing environment. So if your offspring are a little different from you and the environment changes, then hopefully some of those uh, offspring survive. All right. Oh, another benefit for asexual reproduction is you don't have to find a mate. Uh, and that's one of the um, downsides of sexual reproduction is that you do have to find a mate in most cases. Although there are some organisms that will sexually reproduce with themselves. A lot of plants do this, tapeworms do this as well. Next, uh, all organisms grow and develop. So you see this uh, little uh, crocodile here uh, coming out of the egg. Uh, lastly here is that all life evolves. And what evolution is, evolution is a genetic change in a population over time. So we're looking at how the genes in the population change over time, right? So here the units for evolution are populations, not individuals. You have your genes, you either survive that environment or you don't survive that environment. If you do, you can pass your genes on to uh, the next generation. All species, um, uh, genetic composition changes over time. Uh, evolution is a central theme of biology and every living organism is shaped by it. So if we look at this little guy here, uh, this is a pygmy seahorse. Pygmy seahorses are about this big, all right? so. Um, and you can see that they blend in very well with the corals. And what has happened over time here is those that did not blend in so well were eaten by predators, and those that blended in better survived and produced more offspring until you get a situation where these guys blend in very well to the corals that they live on. Now, if the corals are gonna change, well, the pygmy uh, seahorses need to change as well, otherwise they'll die out.